Hey everyone, Will here. In this video I'm going to show you how to build a three oscillator synth like this. This is what it's going to look like when it's done. It can sound just like the one I've made if you use all the parameter settings that I use, but I'm also going to show you how you can start to make it your own. So let's build it from scratch. First thing you want to do actually is navigate to a folder inside your Kima 7 folder inside a folder called Waves and then waveforms and then that'll get you to all these wavetables this is the sound browser here and the reason you want to do that is so that you can just simply drag and drop these wavetables in you can't do that from the finder with Mac so once you have that we're gonna start to build this so command B to get an oscillator from your prototypes double click so get it going here and then the first thing I'm going to do is change the wavetable. The one I decided on is Mini Moog Saw. So I'll drag and drop that right on top of Sign there and it'll replace it. Then for the envelope, I'm going to get a ADSR. While it's highlighted up there, I can just Command C to copy it, then highlight this field and paste it. I'm going to get rid of the L so it's full sample rate. And then frequency, I want to be controlled by the key pitch. So I'll type that in. And then I subtracted an octave, which is minus 12 note number. That's optional if you have the ability to offset your keyboard. Um, you can just do that it'll be the same thing but this for me is helping make it nice and low and then I'm gonna add the ability to tune it a little bit or detune it and I'm gonna call this one because we're gonna have a few of them and then I'm gonna leave everything else at the default if I double click in the background of the sound editor the ADSR will come up and we'll get to work on adjusting this I'm going to gate it with a key down, no legato. I'm going to change this attack time, be a little simpler with just attack time S. If you type an exclamation point in the field, it will automatically fill in the parameter name afterwards. We'll do the same thing for decay time. Sustain level, I'm just going to change this name. It's not going to affect the sound, but I'll change it. Same thing with release time. Cool, and so now this is set up and I just wanna get a few more oscillators. Call this one. So I'll go Command B, back to oscillator. This time I can take it and drag it onto the plus sign. And then I can double click in the mixer here and just go ahead and drag the other one. I'll reorder these so that they're sequential and then double click in the background. They all are there now. If I hit this it'll shrink it and then option clicking will clean it up a bit for you. Go ahead and rename these Oscill Oscillator 2 and Oscillator 3. And now what I can do is any field in the oscillators I need to change that I've already changed in the original, I can just drag that sound into the parameter field. So I can take oscillator one and put it in the wavetable and automatically change it. Same thing for the envelope, same thing for frequency. Then I'll change detune depth to two. And now that oscillator is good to go. I'll do the same thing for three. Change detune depth to three. Double click in the background to update. Now you can see this ADSR is going to all three of these oscillators. Maybe rename the mixer here to be oscillator one plus Oscillator 2 
plus oscillator three. And then to even clean up the name, shrink, expand again. Now I'm going to get a low pass filter. So command B, low pass filter from the prototype strip again, just drag and drop it. Double click to get to its parameter fields. As it sits right now, cutoff is a hot value that you can change in, in real time from the virtual control surface that will open once you play the sound. I adjusted mine to be this, which is 4C plus key velocity I'll explain all this Hertz times 1000 and what this is saying is that 4C is middle C or about 261 Hertz so the minimum um, is going to be that 261 Hertz and then the harder I press down on the key it's going to basically open up and let more high frequencies in. Um, this, this times 1000 is, is allowing this value to go from instead of 0 to 1, now it's 0 to 1000. So its max value is going to be 1000 plus this 4C, which is 261. So about 1261 hertz will be the, the highest frequency uh, here in the, that uh, will be allowed through the filter. I just arrived at this because I wanted it to be a bit more expressive when I put more pressure down, in my case, on the continuum. But you can obviously adjust this uh, to your ears and what you like. Next is to make it polyphonic. So if you go to MIDI voice, command B, MIDI voice for keyboard polyphony, you can just straight up drag and drop that. And there it is. I left all this at the default. And then I added a bit of reverb, but what we can do for now is just hear it and uh, check it out a little bit. So I'll press space bar. All right. So the first thing you might like to do is get rid of the embedding. So hit this gearbox, remove all embedding. And this is a little crazy, so I'll um, go up here and go to cleanup. And I'm going to put uh, three. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is change my detune depths from being faders to knobs. So you can unlock it and do it here, or you can right click or control click and go to widget type, potentiometer. So I'm going to do that for all of these. And then I'm also going to change the range. So this is tuning or detuning the oscillator, I'm going to change it to go from negative one half to positive uh, with a grid of zero so it's continuous. And then I can do one more thing. I can learn this to any MIDI fader or knob by clicking learn and then moving the one I want. So I'll do that to two and three as well. Change the range. And these are half steps. So one is a half step, which would be pretty far out of tune. So this is about a quarter tone, which is still significantly out of tune, but will allow me to get the sound I'm looking for. You can obviously experiment with that range, make it smaller or larger. Cool. Let's just check it out. So you can hear that the harder I press, it lets more high frequencies through and you can change it in real time so you can kind of tune it up. Can 
going to have one sharp, one flat, but again, just use your ears to arrive at the sound you want. That's pretty good. And then if you want to overwrite the default so your changes stay the same, you can control click on the camera. If you want to make a new preset, just click the camera, give it a name or use the one that Kima comes up with there for you. So there it is. And then the last thing I did was put some reverb on it. So I'll put in uverb stereo. And then this I just drag and drop right on the line. Option click to show the whole sound. And then here it is. You can get rid of this embedding again. And then play around with your parameter settings here for all the reverb. If you want to know exactly what I had in uh, when I played the sound the first time, I'll show you here. My impending doom synth. You can just pause the video and you can just highlight these fields and type those values in if you want the exact same sound. And some of that tuning is just, uh, or detuning out of tuneness is just coming from the continuum and my inability to hit the, the key there. So using the fake keyboard, you might get a sound closer to something like this. But again, you can adjust all your parameter fields and do your thing. One thing to really play around with is your wavetable. So if you control click this, you can see it. And it can be nice to just come in here and grab some of these other ones, swap them out, control click on the disc. Experiment with that in the different oscillators. All of them can be a different one. And have some fun with this. Explore your parameter settings and your wavetables in particular. And I welcome any thoughts or questions you have. I appreciate you watching. Please like and subscribe if you're into this kind of thing. And we'll see you in the next video. Thanks.